Good evening. Tonight, Channel 47 presents a special program providing a forum for the fair and open expression of opinion. The aim of this program is simple, to create an opportunity for constructive dialogue on delicate issues affecting two communities in disagreement over the use of the name Macedonia. What follows will be an open discussion, a debate, between two representatives of the respective communities. Our guests tonight are Mr. John Bitov Sr., who is lobbying in favor of Canadian and international recognition of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, and Dr. Athanasios Fusias, who is in favor of recognition of that state, but not under the name Macedonia. Our moderator tonight will be Mr. Andrew Taylor, a former international debating champion. The format of tonight's debate will be as follows. Each participant will receive two minutes for an opening statement, followed by four minutes each to present their positions. They will then receive an additional four minutes to respond. Two minutes will be reserved for closing statements. The order in which the two participants will speak has been determined by a coin toss. Mr. Andrew Taylor will now open the debate. Mr. Taylor? Thank you, Renato. I'd like to call upon our first speaker, Mr. Biddo, to make his opening remarks. Thank you, Andrew. And let me first say, on behalf of the Macedonians all over the world, how thankful we are for the opportunity that Channel 47 has given us to express the views of Macedonians. Over the past year, much has been written and said by the Greek government about the Macedonian people and the use of the name Macedonia by the Republic of Macedonia. When Macedonia declared its independence from Yugoslavia in September of 1991, the European community, with the concurrence of Greece, established a commission headed by Judge Badinter the president of the Constitutional Court in France to determine whether the four former republics of Yugoslavia satisfied the international criteria, criteria for recognition. After an exotic review, Judge Badinter determined that both Slovenia and Macedonia satisfied all the national <coughs> criteria. With respect to the use of the name Macedonia, Greece has as absolutely no legitimate claim to the exclusive use of the name Macedonia. Until 1930, any reputable historical map would just demonstrate that Greece never had one inch of Macedonia. And that year, 1913, Macedonia was divided into three parts with the concurrence of the Western powers following the Second Balkan War. This occurred pursuant to the Treaty of Bucharest. The Macedonia that was divided in 1913 had, be had been called Macedonia for centuries. The Macedonians of 1930 included what is today called the Republic of Macedonia. Moreover, as one would expect, the people who lived in the pre-1930 Macedonia were called Macedonians. They spoke the Macedonian language and maintained their Macedonian customs. The three parts of Macedonia in 1930 were divided. Then the 40% Macedonia that was given to Serbia in 1930 received its independence in 1945 and became one of the six republics of Yugoslavia. Uh, thus, bit off, I'm afraid we've come to the end of your two minutes. If you could just you. conclude quickly. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to you in, in just a, a minute, but now I'd like to call on Dr. Fusius to make his opening statement. Thanks, Andy. I would like to make a few things clear right from the start. Greece has never been against the recognition of the former Yugoslavian Republic of Macedonia. We are neighbors with that new state, and we believe that being recognized would help on the stabilization and will help, will help on the progression of the uh, Balkan area. We objected, however, very strongly on the use of the name Macedonia. And our objections have two reasons. One is clearly historical and cultural and national pride. For over 4,000 years, Macedonians were as Greeks as anybody else, was, were as Greeks as Athenians, were as Greeks as Spartans, and there are volumes and volumes of historical evidence to prove that. Alexander the Great himself, his father Philip II, and their predecessors were participating according to the historical evidence on the Olympic Games, 
where only Greeks could participate. That's the historical part of the argument. The political one is that we had enough of suffering and problems on that place of the world. We believe if the people of the former Yugoslavian Republic insist on their arguments to use the name Macedonia and to call themselves as the Macedonians of the world, we believe that that is stealing of the name and culture of another country and it will keep the instability of that region for a long, long time. We believe that the stability of that region will be helped only if the place is recognized under other name rather than Macedonia. Thank you, Dr. Fusius. Mr. Bidoff, we come back to you. You know, it's uh, surprising and shocking to hear that up until 1988, no Greek ever admitted or accepted the fact there was such a person as a Macedonian. They never permitted one to call himself a Macedonian. And even my friend Dr. Futis in 1984, sitting at a restaurant, said to me, there's no such thing as a Macedonian. Yet now, because the political goal is different, and now because the situation is different, all of a sudden, since the Republic of Macedonia has declared independence, we now, now, more than ever before, we are Macedonians, but we are Greek. You know, you can't be both. You can only be one. He speaks of history. He speaks of Alexander the Great. He speaks of, Phil, uh, of his father. You know, Alexander the Great was a Macedonian. He was born on a piece of land called Macedonia. If a man is born in Canada, he is a Canadian. Even if a lady happens to be here for a few moments and borns a child, that child becomes a Canadian. And so whoever was born in Macedonia from the last many, many centuries was Macedonian. Furthermore, let it be known that Greece never occupied any part of Macedonia, any part until 1913. I want everyone should understand that Greece never controlled any part of Macedonia. In 1921-22, at that point in time when the Greeks couldn't use their democratic, supposedly cradle of democracy principles, they then turned to using force on the people there by making them change their names, by making them change the names of their cities, uh, cities and towns and villages, by forbidding people to speak their language. And today they turn around and say, we're Macedonians, but we're Greek. And those same people, those same people denied the democratic principles of life, the right for one to speak a language in which his mother and father, his grandparents and great-grandparents spoke. Now, you know, it's, it's shocking when one says we cannot call ourselves Macedonians or that this little country of two million people is going to be trying to achieve or do something else. You know, that's just political garbage and all truth. The fact is that the president of Macedonia has pleaded with the prime minister of Greece to sit down and work out an agreement under the United Nations to talk about territorial, to talk about all the other problems. And as he says, if they want to become friends, then let's sit down, let's discuss this issue, but let's recognize that there is someone called Macedonian. I am a Macedonian descendant, a very proud descendant. I speak my mother tongue language, which is a Macedonian Slavic language. And it should be known to the world because every day more and more, every newspaper of the world is recognizing and understanding it. And I thank the Greeks for allowing the world to, for, 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 to finally understand what the Macedonian question is all about. They are learning that there is a race of people called Macedonians, that they are entitled to govern themselves, and if anyone wanted to go under the democratic principles, let them go there and ask those two and a half million people what they are. And you will find that 99% of them will say we are Macedonians and be proud to say it. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bidhoff. I'd now like to call on Dr. Fusius to present his position for four Thanks minutes. Uh, first of all, I'm uh, quite amazed with uh, Mr. Bidhoff's memory. It's true that uh, 
1984, as he recalls, uh, sitting in a bar and having a drink together. He called himself as Macedonian, and I said that there is no such a thing as Macedonian ethnicity or Macedonian uh, ethnic group. There was never, ever in history such a group identified as ethnic minority group or ethnic group by the name Macedonians. What we see throughout history is that there are Greek Macedonians, as there are Greek Athenians, as they are Greek Spartans, they are the people from the northern part of Greece, which was called the province of Macedonia. In other words, it is like being a Canadian citizen, Ontarian, of Greek background or descent, or of Italian descent. That doesn't make you different from being a Canadian citizen. What Mr. Beto forgot, however, is that that night I very strongly said that not only that such thing as a Macedonian ethnic group was never, never uh, accepted by history itself, but also that his very name does not indicate that he is coming from the roots of Alexander the Great or Philip. Philip's name is a very Greek name and it is the friend of horses. Mr. Bitov's name and I've mentioned that in 1984 when we were together. To me, it sounds of Slavic origin. And uh, I, was telling he, I was telling him then that he should feel very proud of being someone of Slavic origin. And he does not have to steal anybody's, anybody else's history or culture. Regarding the history itself, particularly uh, for the last two centuries, I would like to correct a few things. Greece got its independence after seven brutal war years from the Ottoman Empire. And at that time, we were able to free and liberate only a small part of Greece. Late 19th century, <coughs> we tried to liberate the northern part of Greece, the Macedonia that is, and the Epirus, another province of Greece. And we could not succeed to do so. It was in 1913, when we, we succeeded to liberate our brothers and sisters and to have the other daughter of Greece, which is the province of Macedonia, unite with the rest of his brothers and sisters. That's what Mr. Bidov was refer referring to. We do not oppose, we do not oppose at all to these people to be recognized for what they are. They lived in Greece and we uh, helped them to live there for as long as they did. As Greek citizens, of Slavic descent or other descents. It was not on great Alexander's years, but many centuries later when Slavs came to that part of the world and they were working in the northern part of Greece and in other areas like Bulgaria and Albania. And they were Greek citizens of Slavic descent. I can understand Mr. Bidov and uh, people like him that they have lived in Greece, his predecessors lived in Greece, but that does not make him a Macedonian. It makes him a Greek citizen who lived in the province of Macedonia, who is of Slavic or some other origin. I think that we have to start moderating our views. I think we have to start seeing the truth from a historical point of view as well as from the point of view of what, of what would make that place there stable for ourselves, for our kids and for our grand grandkids. Uh, I'm referring to the whole Balkan area. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fusius. I'd now like to call Mr. Bidow for four minutes of response. You, when one talks about peace and getting along with his neighbor, I want to repeat, I know for a fact how many times the president of Macedonia has asked for meetings with the prime minister of Greece. Not only he, he doesn't reply, but if anything, it's through some one else and it's an insult. You know, one has to understand that history books are history books and Greeks have written it their way and Bulgarians have written it their way and Serbians their way and many others. But let's simplify it. Let's speak how it really is. There's a piece of land called Macedonia. Whoever was born in Macedonia whether it be from 500 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 
or 3,000 years ago. He is a Macedonian. That is all there is to it. Now, is he descended of something else? Many may be. And that's their opportunity to say so. But I said before, and I repeat, in the Republic of Macedonia that we speak of now, that has seeked and, and asked for recognition, why doesn't anyone go there and ask those people what they are? I'll tell you. Tell them there's something else and see what happens to you. They are proud Macedonians because, as I said before, their fathers were, their grandfathers were, their great-grandfathers were, and so on. And you know, we must move to a time and place of 1991 and 92. The Greeks like to talk about history to try to confuse the issue. And I say, if you really want peace, you must talk about what is happening in 1991 and 1992, what has happened without the whole Eastern Bloc and the world today. And let's face the problems of today, and let's see how we can resolve those problems. Greek is a member of NATO. It has 10 million people. It has a large army. It has all the support of the NATO arms. Macedonia has an army of a few thousand people, which it just started up. It has no arms. And is that what we're going to fear? Is that what we're going to fear? Or are we afraid of something else? Are we afraid the truth is now starting to prevail and people are starting to understand? I really believe that is what it's all about. We now have come to a conclusion at a time in our history of Greece that we're saying to ourselves, you know what? The truth is starting to come up. We wrote it the way we wanted it, but even in spite of that, the truth is coming out. Macedonia has its own language. The people there speak it. You can find it in their churches that were built thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago. I ask and I plead with people from all over the world, such as the London Telegraph has done, and the Washington Post, and the New York Times, and many others, and they will find what the truth is really all about. Macedonia will be recognized. It has to be recognized. It has met all the criteria, as I re repeated before. And one must remember and respect that not one human life to this day is lost. In spite of all the embargoes that Greece has put on it, in spite of how it's tried to, 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 to make these people die of hunger, they've forbidden them to have heat, they've for forbidden any kinds of food to go there, and then they talk about being people working for humanity, working for other human beings, trying to create relationship with neighbors. I ask you to be the judge of that. Thank you, Mr. Bidoff. I'd now like to call on Dr. Fusius for four minutes of response. I just want to, first of all, remind Mr. Bidoff that the necessities to the Republic of Skopje are going, and they have been going over the last year and a half through the port of Thessaloniki, Greece. We have, as the Greek government has allowed and has supported, to have the necessities uh, go through our own ports because we believe in humanity and we believe that we have to support any people that they're struggling for recognition and they're struggling for independence. Greeks have been very well known in history for their uh, fights and beliefs on democracy, self-determination, freedom and peace. The two world wars we've been cited with the Allies to fight for democracy, to fight for peace and freedom. We always supported and we've been on the side of people who fight for independence and self-determination, but not on the expense of our national pride, not on the expense of our history and our culture. We've been providing to the people of Skopje because we believe that the people have done nothing wrong. They themselves are victims of that propaganda that has started so strongly with Marshal Tito in 1945, who for the first time in his really master kind of mind, the communist kind of propaganda, has established for the first time the nation so-called of the Yugoslavian Republic of Macedonia. And he knew very well General Tito, what he was trying to do. He had his eyes 
down south on the warm waters of the Aegean Islands. And we see from President Grigorov these days printing on their national currency the white tower of Thessaloniki, the symbol of the city that I was grown up and the city that I lived. We see that on their flag they have put the stolen Greek emblem of Alexander the Great and his father's uh, dynasty. And we see maps distributed as recently as last November in the City Hall of Toronto that they indicate clearly that they are looking to get not only what they have by international agreements, but also to get one third of what is Greece today. That's what Greeks are opposing to, to the stealing of their history and culture and to the destabilization, further destabilization of that particular uh, area of the world. The fact that there are very few, as Mr. Bitov mentioned before, it doesn't make much difference. As we all know, the terrorists of IRA are not that many, but they have created tremendous suffering for England for years and years. And what we are afraid of is that if that republic is recognized by the name Macedonia, we will have an unstable, unstable region there for generations to come. We ask the world to understand that Greeks, the Greek government, has been open to discussion as recently as last month and last two weeks. We have been accepting an international, uh, an international refereeing group to decide about the name and the resolution on the Balkans, but it's not only the name, it's a package that we expect them to decide upon. An arbitration, in other words. And our Prime Minister in Greece said that we will accept that arbitration and it will be binding. It's Mr. Grigorov who did not accept to discuss with anybody. And his extremistic views that he is Macedonian and that's the only Macedonia that will destabilize the whole area there. I hope you see that after 45 years of Dr. stealing Kyushu. history and culture. Um, thank you. That, uh, thank you. Thank you for your remarks. I now like to call on Mr. Vitov for a final closing remark. Everyone should know that the communists in no way played a part in the independence of Macedonia. It was the Macedonian people who longed for their own freedom and independence. And that was an opportune time for them. Right after the downfall of communism, it was Macedonians, patriots, that got together with their shovels, hand grenades, whatever, to fight for that independence. And it was them, and not communism, that obtained it for the Macedonian people. Mr. Gligorov, that my friend speaks of, says that he refuses to sit down and talk with any committee. You know, I can't help it, and I'm sorry that I have to laugh, because I have been there many times with Mr. Gligorov when he has pleaded with the Greek government to sit down and try to resolve the problem. His answers were that the prime minister is too busy. The foreign affairs minister is too busy. And let it be known, and I say this to you today, Macedonia will be accepted with the name Macedonia because that is what those two and a half million people are all about. It's not Gligorov's decision anymore. Gligorov would have a revolution if he was to accept any other name. Those two and a half million people who were brought up from mothers and fathers who were Macedonians are not in any way going to give that up. You know, we talk of pride, we talk of respect. That's what it's all about. It's, it's your mother and it's your father and it's your heritage. And as much as Dr. Futsis would like to call himself a Greek, I can assure you, I just as much would like to call myself a descendant of Macedonians, of the Macedonian people who are there today working for that Republic of Macedonia to be free and independent and recognized. Thank you, Mr. Bidoff. I'd now like to call on Dr. Fusius for a final closing statement. Mr. Grigorov fought on the side of the Hitler and the Nazis during the Second World War. Later, he fought on the side of communists for a long, long time. And today, he presents himself as fighting on the side of freedom and democracy. 
I also want to mention that a number, a number of Greek citizens of Slavic descent who were living on the northern part of Greece, the province of Macedonia, have joined and they admit that themselves have joined the communist forces during our civil war. The forces that they were directed and supported from Stalin and his group to fight and defeat Greece in order to have what they call Macedonia as independent. That's what they did. And still, they insist to fight in a very extremist way, and they do not want to see that this does not help anybody. They do not want to see that it is only with moderation and only with understanding that we can live there as next door neighbors, and our kids and our grandkids can live there in a peaceful and free manner. I want to make clear that the Greek government has time and again accepted openly and publicly the arbitration of a group, international group, regarding the name and the other issues, such as the hostile propaganda of the people of Skopje and Mr. Grigorov and Mr. Bitov and people like these people. Uh, also, the, their expansionistic plans, all those issues have to be dealt with and the name and we are open and we are going to accept the arbitration as binding. It's Mr. Grigorov and his people that they do not want to accept an internationally based decision which would be very, very stabilizing the area. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Fusius. Uh, that, I'm afraid, brings our time to an end, but I'd like to thank both of you gentlemen for agreeing to be with us tonight. Thank, thank you both thank very, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this concludes tonight's debate. Channel 47 hopes this encounter has proven useful in the often difficult task of reaching understanding between people. Often, the need to come to terms with a difficult issue also represents an opportunity to learn more about those who disagree with us. Tonight was such an opportunity. For closing, we would like to thank Mr. John Bitov Sr. and Mr. Athanasios Fusias for their participation in tonight's forum. We would also like to thank Mr. Andrew Taylor for his assistance in moderating the debate. We look forward to other opportunities for dialogue in the near future. On behalf of everyone here at Channel 47, we thank you, good night, and see you next time. Bye-bye.